Um, race, I feel like is a very touchy subject, especially for people um, who aren't of color. White people, including myself, have many, many forms of privilege. And because we grew up in such a racist society, we often perpetuate racist things, even if we don't want to. And kind of dealing with that and really trying to process our own internalized racism and racist things we've done can be very difficult. And of course, at various points in my life, it was pretty difficult for me. First, they need to recognize their privilege because a lot of white students, they think, no, I'm not privileged. Like, I live on the east side, but my house is not that big or things like that. But it's something that you have to recognize and it doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. But you just have to realize that this is a privilege and a position that you just have and you have to accept that. I went to a training this past weekend, it was undoing racism, and um, a lot of the people at the training were white. These white people um, in the space, they were just like, oh, that's, that can't be true because I'm not trying to be racist. And you know, like, oh, that's not the person that I think I am. Like, I don't think racist thoughts. Now, somebody who doesn't have that critical lens yet doesn't think themselves as racist. Because different people, experience different things and it's harder to try to instill it's like it's harder to try to learn something and not be ignorant when ignorance is all you've known i do have racist thoughts and i guarantee every white person in america has racist thoughts but oftentimes adults are not really comfortable or willing to talk about their racist feelings and thoughts and i think kids are oftentimes much more honest about that so we did a workshop in rural maine recently with a bunch of white kids and we just asked them they were middle schoolers we just asked them you know do you guys say the n-word a lot and they're like oh yeah oh yeah definitely definitely right so kids are oftentimes much more willing to kind of admit the racist things they do than adults who kind of want to pretend that they don't have racist thoughts or that they don't have internalized racism oftentimes it is painful to admit our own internalized racism because we want to think of ourselves as good people so instead of thinking about their own internalized racism many white people prefer to ignore that it actually exists Oh, I think it's really hard to sometimes work with those kind of people because our work, we basically have to explain or we try to teach people, you know, and I don't know, just hard. Like I said, I did go to predominantly white schools, so um, a lot of these, like, a lot of these kids were in denial, not really in denial because they knew that they had, like, that their parents were rich and they were professors or whatever, but they didn't really understand how that came at the expense of someone like me. White people can walk away from this system and this conversation and not have that be a part of their lives, and that's the white supremacy, and that's where we have to really get people to clue in on. And they have like a privilege that they, they don't ever recognize. But they really need to confront it, because first of all, once you're born white, you have a privilege and that's it. My skin tone doesn't come off. Actually working in PSU, we have come across like um, some white people who even though they try their best to like say, oh, I understand, you know, uh, you don't, don't understand. Like someone that, um, like someone that I know, they, they really believe that they understand like how, how to relate to someone like me. And you know, they try and it's not their fault that just sometimes they, you know just things that they say and just like how they act towards like other people and I don't know I just don't think that they fully understand their white privilege sometimes. I just want non-students of color to understand that there's a there's a world that's bigger than them and even though they are trying to understand people of color they're, they're not always going to fully understand them but they can at least try and attempt to. Take a seat. <laughs> I think that's what I say is like take a seat like and also get involved like take a seat but also instead of <clears throat> focusing on how much privilege you have maybe focus on how you can use that privilege to benefit someone else to like help someone else out because yeah I guarantee you that you have a lot more sway than you think you do. One way people have sway is through their discipline. For example, even if teachers in Rhode Island are really trying to understand their kids and really not trying to be racist, they're suspending black kids at three times the rate that they're suspending white kids. That's internalized racism. And that's one thing that white people have to face even when they think they're doing the right thing. Even if you know you think you're woke and you think, oh yeah, like I know everything, no. Because there's something that you don't know. And it's not okay to just be like, oh, because I think I know everything, I'm just gonna close myself off to a new experience with different people and um, 
just gonna say that I'm I'm all knowing because you're not. Nobody is. Like, I'm a minority. There's a lot of things I don't know. There's nothing wrong with being able to take criticism, you know, from your peers and people that have done this, you know, for for years before you. And I think it's just really important to like have these conversations to be able to relate to each other. It's hard to take criticism and it's hard to be told you're wrong. When a person of color tells you you're wrong about something, you don't have to believe them 100% of the time because people are people and of course, not everyone's right all the time. But when it comes to race, even if they're not right 100% of the time, they're right most of the time. And I think it's difficult for white people to realize the fact that when it comes to race, people of color are probably right because they're speaking about it from their own personal experiences. They're speaking about something that they've had to deal with their entire lives, whereas white people really haven't had to deal with at all. And so when people have told me I'm wrong, at some points I'd be like, no, 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 I'm, I'm definitely right. But I think what we should do as white people is get to the point where we at least consider the fact that there's a very good chance we're wrong. And when people have confronted me, right, many times, right, when I've actually been mature enough to kind of sit back and really think about what I've done, many times I have been wrong. And of course that hurts, right? But that's just what you gotta do if you wanna try to be a good person. Realize the mistakes you've made, right? And try to improve yourself. And two, they might just want to stay ignorant to what is around them, which is a big issue because when you don't know anything, you're never going to know anything. And if you don't try to learn, then you're going to stay in that little bubble of your own mind and your own ideas when you actually have to get outside of that to see different communities. It's currently projected that sometime between 2045 and 2050, people of color will make up the majority of people in the United States. America is changing, whether white people like it or not. And making sure that white kids understand the lives of kids of color is super important if our upcoming generations are going to work together. Because when you get into the real world, there's still going to be minorities around you. So you need to learn how to interact with those kind of people. Or though we are all different ethnicities, we're all, diff we're all people in general. White people will, of course, be a part of civil rights work and always can be. But I think it's important to realize when the civil rights work is based around people of color, I think it's important that white people take a seat and let these people lead these movements.